It's been a massive process and I think uh, it's a real privilege to play for your country and the girls that we have picked are the girls that have come through um, the testing and the challenges that we have put in place for them since October last year. So I'm actually really proud of the whole squad um, because the game style shifts that we've seen in the ANZ and the improvements that we've seen from individuals has been massive. So the, the whole squad contributes to the 12 that are in front of us and it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite emotional because um, there are some amazing players that have missed out um, and that the girls that are in that 12 um, really understand how hard everybody's worked. So to name a final 12 was really tough. Um, you have to look at the whole context that you're going into in the competition. The in international netball is different than ANZ netball. Um, and the World Cup is, um, it requires people that can withstand five games in a row at international level and then back up for three games against the top four teams in the world. So you're looking for uh, players that can withstand that workload, that can repeat performance, precision, that can um, play through anything that's thrown at them, and that have um, a high level of tactical um, awareness about uh, competitions like this. You're going in for 10 days, you're competing for your country, and you are, you're going after really big games, so it's about those people that can manage that pressure and enjoy that and know what their job is and what they need to do. I think picking the shooting end, um, it was all it was about the the shooters that could be available for the ball supply coming into the circle. So you've got to be able to get the ball first and you've got to be able to work with your shooting partner. You've got to create space, create opportunities so that then the, sh the shot is, is less pressured. So we were looking for people that, a skill set that could do that um, and a skill set that had worked together before and had um, um, created and forged relationships so there's a real tight understanding about each other. In New Zealand, you know, when you look back at the New Zealand game style and New Zealand teams of the past, the real sharpness of our shooting circle has been something that's defined the silver, silver ferns. It's been players that can change angles at the last minute and have that real solid connection with the feeders. Well, Maria um, Falau, uh, uh, you know, she's somebody that has, and she's an intuitive shooter. Uh, she loves shooting, she loves the feel of, of the shot um, and she loves taking the long shot which takes pressure off um, the shooter underneath the post. Um, she's experienced campaigner. Amelia Anikinasio is a classic playmaker. Her out the front at goal attack opens up the ball for the shooter behind her um, and she'll keep working the whole time for front space and she'll keep going to her other shooter to create openings for them. And again, she's been um, accurate this season as well. Bailey Mears is, is a player that is fortunate to have a, a World Cup under her belt already. Um, we know what she can do under the post. Uh, we know her game at goal attack this year with Mystics grew and grew throughout the season. Um, and she's also somebody that can slide. Not many shooters can play all three attacking positions really well. And Tapaya. Tapai is a, a player that um, when the ball's in her hand, her decision making is really stable. Uh, she doesn't throw much ball away, she's really safe and she's prepared to go to the post and put the shot up. The mid-court in a netball team is the engine room. They are the, the grinders in a team that need to create good unstressed ball supply to their shooters and then they have to be um, really dominant on defence to win ball back and they are a connecting position so with Laura technically and tactically you know she's world class with what she does she's really experienced and she's just a journeyman in any team she will go till the she'll play all day if she has to for her team um, and she's very good at um, organising defence and driving and working the midcourt so that she can open up opportunities for her shooters. Uh, Gina Crampton, wow, what finesse. Uh, the way she's playing with the release of the pass and her long vision. Um, again, she's prepared to be patient and maintain possession for her team, but she's prepared to switch up 
who you don't kind of you can't really predict with Gina um, the release of her past. She hasn't got she's got to a stage in her playing skill set where the variety is massive. So defending her um, pe defenders have to be very sharp about what um, Gina's going to pull out, and she's reading the game as she goes the whole time. Uh, Shannon, Shannon Saunders is a player that um, we've seen in the ANZ competition just grow with confidence with every game. When she came in, her feeding rate's really high as well for a centre. Um, just, she, she's a player that will read ahead and balance and then just drive to the circle edge. So her change of pace hitting the circle edge again shows a variety in how she can um, bring the ball down court and, and surprise people with either her um, pace or her change of direction. So Karen Berger, um, what can I say about Karen? She just wants the ball. Awesome to have a wing defence in any team that just wants the ball and she will position herself to um, smother and make the wing attacks um, roll as stressed as possible and she just demands the ball the whole time, consistently throughout a game. She's been a consistent ball getter for the Pulse and the ANZ and when she came away for quad we could see her potential in that. If you look at our defensive end you can see four people that again are versatile. You look at um, the way that they play the game, we need defenders that can create intercepts. Um, when you go into a tournament situation, you can play man on man and you can you know, out hustle an opposition, but to have defenders that can create intercepts and get ball off the body and also um, make the catch really pressured is what we need. Um, so Phoenix Karaka has been you know, leading the defensive end for intercepts this year in ANZ. She um, came in as a specialist uh, training partner to the Silver Fern Development Squad in December and then the progress that she has made throughout the year has been outstanding. Not only that, but also her leadership and her nous. Um, Casey Kopua, uh, again, her presence in the circle, her ability to read the angles, her ability to work with others is a huge strength and um, really excited to see um, what more we can do with Casey. And she's somebody that's always seeking improvement in little parts of her game and she's really accurate with um, where she's at in her game. So she's constantly looking for ways that she can sharpen her sword. Um, Jane Watson, uh, she's just had an outstanding, um, outstanding season for the tactics um, after they lost Tim Alissi, knowing that you've got somebody who's a te real team person and say, right, I'm gonna go back there and I'm gonna get the ball and I'm gonna make this work with any young bucks that wanna come and play with me. So you've seen a, a great growth in her game. Her leadership is outstanding. She's positively encouraging her team constantly. What you get with Jane is um, somebody that can read the release of the ball very well. And so she is very good at reading that, very good at eliminating options and going for another one. Uh, Katrina Rore is somebody that will dominate an opponent. She knows she's got the game smarts, she knows how to dominate opposition, um, she can wear them down just from her tight marking um, and she's very experienced with how she plays both goal defence and goal keep. I'm really excited and I'm very happy for the 12. It's a huge privilege to play for New Zealand. As athletes we sat down with the team in September last year and the first thing Nolan said was I want an explosive game. And so everything that we planned for, uh, the game style, the conditioning, the way we play, the skill set was about playing an explosive style of netball. Uh, December we laid down the law because we are in the business of performance sport and we needed athletes that could withstand uh, the loading going into not only World Cup but the preparation before that. By the time we get to World Cup it's too late to prepare for anything. So Sunshine Coast we're going over there to test ourselves and then we have the Cadbury series. So we, look, we were looking for athletes who could withstand training load and who could also perform and repeat those performances consistently.